Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. It's been quite a while. So I decided to make a guide on how to beat the very hard dungeon with a very weak team um, for Princess Connect. I recently started playing Princess Connect again on the global server. I used to play on the Japanese server a long time ago. So I'm like kind of a very old veteran player. Um, I have quite a bit of experience with the game, which is why I was actually able to do this. Um, you can see it's, it's going to be like a pretty extreme, like very clutch run of using only um you know only these like basic units they're like natural one star two star units um, i made chaika three stars you'll you'll see why in, later on but she doesn't have to be three stars for this you can do this with with only like a, a full team of two star units and i'll show you my run and how you can do it as well so this is my first time making a video like this, um, like with a script, with a presentation, not really a script, but, but like a presentation. So things are a little bit more organized. Um, I received some feedback in the past about, you know, editing and scripting my videos. So I decided to give it a try. Um, I made, I think I made over a thousand videos for YouTube. And this is like the first time doing it this way. So hopefully, hopefully you like it. Anyways, so the, to, to get into it, this is my exact team that I used to be able to beat the dungeon. I used a total of six units, and I basically swapped out um, Akari and Kokoro, um, you know, in, based, in between my runs sometimes, uh, depending on the situation. And I'll, 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 I'll show you in the actual run late, later on. I have a recording of the actual run, and I'll show you later on. So these are my exact units. Um... They're all level 58, they're all rank 7, and they have all of their gear equipped and fully maxed out, like fully upgraded to, to max. Now, typically, I would recommend against um, upgrading the gear of your units, you know, like to, to max, unless it's a unit that you absolutely need for progression. And I think in the case of the Very Hard Dungeon, it's actually very, very important to actually be able to clear it because you get a, um, a furniture that gives you 48 stamina every single day. And I think that's, you could you could say it's not a lot, but it does actually add up. So you do, do you want to be able to clear the dungeon um, as soon as possible to get that furniture. So you can put it in your guild house and just start getting, you know, 48 free stamina every single day. This is the, re the main reason why you want to be able to clear it as, as quickly and as soon as possible. And I think in my opinion, it's probably the number one thing to aim for um, when you're trying to progress in the game. Okay, so um, I kind of struggled a little bit with this because I was missing some um, potential units that I could use to make my runs a little bit easier. And this is kind of the strategy I had to come up with in order for me to beat it. Now, to answer the question of why my Chaika is three stars, um, you actually don't have to make her three stars. This is the run you can see, like she was never in any danger of dying or anything like that. Um, the The main, main reason I made my, my um, I, th I think it, her name is Chika, not Chaika. Chika three stars is because she is very, very waifu, as you can see in this picture in this starting screen you know whenever you boot up your game this is what i see and if you want to see this as well then you have to make her three stars so there's a few other three star waifus like they're like natural three star waifus they come as three stars um, that you can use in order to beat this dungeon um, it's jun nozomi shizuru and maho and you can see like you probably tell they all have something they all have one thing in common, and that's they all have some sort of healing. Um, the Jun, Shizuru, and Maho have a single target heal, and Nozomi has a AoE heal for, for the front line. So um, I think in, in order in the order of importance, I would say like Maho is probably ranked the highest, and then Shiz Shizuru, and then Jun, and then Nozomi. In order to clear the dungeon, if you have Maho, I think the um, you could probably do this at a at a even lower level. The lowest I've seen anyone clear the the very hard dungeon is at level 55, 
um, but they used Jun Nozomi and Maho to be able to do it. So you have to, you know, if you have one of these units, you could potentially do it at a lower level than, than when I did it. Um, I do think my like run is probably the most, like the, the bare minimum, like that you can cut it. So I, I, um, I can't say for sure, but I would be very doubtful that anyone can do it at 57. You know, like 58 is like probably the limit. So in order for me to um, explain the strategy, I have to explain the four basic dungeon mechanics in, in Princess Connect and how dungeons work. So the first two rules, um, I think they're, they should be like rules or mechanics. I think mechanics is probably better. Um, the first two mechanics are are pretty straightforward. Um, anyone that's done one of the dungeon runs before will, will know about it. And that's basically your units, HP and TP bars. They'll regen and remain the same after clearing a dungeon stage. So if you have a unit, you know, that's that has like half their health, it'll like regen a bit. After you clear a stage, it'll regen a bit. And then that unit will stay at that health when you enter this the, the next stage. And any units that die during a dungeon stage will remain dead for the remainder of the dungeon run. I think this one's also very straightforward. If anyone dies during one of your dungeon runs, um, they're just permanently dead for that run. So you, know, you gotta be careful and make sure nobody dies, which is why um, healers are very, very recommended for dungeon runs, because you can actually just, you know, pretty much heal through everything. And then um, healers auto attacks actually do quite a decent amount of damage as well. And the third is your units, the, the third and fourth rules, most people don't know, know too much about. And I basically abuse the third and fourth um, mechanic in order for me to, to clear the, 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 the dungeon using this method. And that is your units, HP and TP bars will remain the same when the timer runs out and you fail to clear a stage. And the enemy's HP and TP bar remain the same when the timer runs out when you fail to clear a stage. So what this means is the timer at the top of your screen, you know, if you look at the top right of your screen, you'll see a timer. When, when it hits zero, your units actually don't die. They will just remain the same. Like their HP and TP bar won't regen like when you clear the stage, it will just remain the same. And the same goes for the enemy's HP and TP bar as well. And I basically abuse this in order to um, clear the dungeon. So the, the strategy is actually very very simple. All you all you want to do is you want to survive the boss's AoE damage using shields and healing until the timer runs out and you just very very slowly wear him down with you know healer auto attacks. Just very very slowly. He will eventually die. So the first time I did this it actually took more than an hour for me to do this because there was a lot of a lot and lot of trial and error. Um, sometimes he would um, hit someone and then sometimes I'm, I'm literally like trying to make sure he misses an attack on like one of my units. So I would go in and try over and over and over again until he misses a hit on one of my units in order for me to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you basically the first run of it because if I showed you the entire run, it'll be, it'll be way too long. Like this video will be way too long. So I'm going to show you the first part of it, um, explain my way through it, and the basics of the strategy. And I actually, um, during my recording, I, I talked through the entire process. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a second video um, that is completely like separate from this one. And it will just be like a long, like one hour video of me going through the entire run. It will show all my fails, like everything when I do some like very clutch thing that's like frame by frame I'll show the entire process this way if anyone wants to you know do like challenge the extreme they can I think I think that would be a pretty good idea so we're gonna we're gonna get into the actual battle I have a recording of the actual battle all right so this is a recording of the actual battle that I did and what you want to do is you want to play at one time speed and one of the things you want to do before the run is you can do you can prep your units in the previous run by basically making sure that you don't use their their skills when you finish the run. Um, I was pretty lucky on this run because in the previous run, I think it was 
like a few healers or like some um, like utility units that were at the back when when in the previous stage. So I was actually able to prep my units pretty well and they came in this fight with like a full HP and a TP bar and I was able to do do the first run pretty smoothly. So I started the run with um, with this team. Instead of Akari, I used Kokoro. And the main reason for this is because my Akari at level 58 was not tanky enough for me to survive the first round of the boss. He does a few of his, um, a few of his, his rocket fist moves and it actually makes it pretty hard for me to, to survive. So I'll, I'll play a bit of the video and I'll, I'll pause whenever he does one of his special abilities. He only has three moves. So this is his first one. The first one is he'll shoot out these um, his hands like rockets and he'll, he'll hit the first three units and it'll do damage in two segments. So I can show you a bit. It goes out, it hits, hits me once, um, I lose some health. And then I'm going to activate my skills here before the second segment of the damage hits me. You can see it explodes and then it does another um, portion of damage. And what you can do for this is you because your units gain TP whenever they're damaged, if your one of your units happen to have like a full TP bar and um, like not full health, what you can do is while when the rocket fist lands and the first you know the first portion of the damage hits you can activate your skill before the second portion of the damage hits and this way you can heal your health back and also gain a bit of tp from the damage and that's 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 exactly what i did here and right here this is the second move you can see him like starting to glow. And what this move does is it does a bit of AoE damage and it also silences all your units. You can see over here that this is the silence debuff. And what silence means is they're not able to use their, their um, special abilities, their union burst, the one that uses your TP. And over here, I'm I'm just shielding up and healing up, and this is going to be the boss's um, union burst. This is the move that he does when he has a full TP. So it doesn't show his TP bar, like you're not able to see his TP bar, but he also has a TP bar himself um, that's also charging up, and it works the exact same way as um, your TP bar. So the more you hit him, the more TP he gains if he... Um, hits you he also gains TP if he kills one of your units he gains you know a lot of TP so over here he gains he gained all his TP from killing Chaika's little you know spirit thing um, it's unfortunate that you know that that thing feeds him TP but it's actually fine you still have to bring Chaika because of her um, AoE healing so over here that's his union burst it does a lot of damage and one of the reasons I was able to survive is you, you can see before, like earlier, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just skipping back a little bit. You can see earlier, um, after he did his silence, silencing move, I activated my shield on Yukari. And this shield is a magic shield. I think at level 58, it blocks around 1k um, magical damage. So it's actually quite, quite, quite a bit. Without this shield, your backline, like your Yui and your, your Chika, won't be able to, to survive. So you have to put up the shield, use it to catch his, um, his ulti, and then heal up after. He does his Rocket Fist again. After the first segment of damage, I heal up, and then I take the second hit in order to gain more TP. This is something I do quite a lot against him, and I think it's um, necessary if you want to beat him at this level. This was something I did a few days ago. Um, my units are like a lot stronger now, or a little bit stronger now, so I no longer have to like be too careful with it. I could, I can do this at two times speed. But if you're doing it, you know, in your fifties, then you definitely want to 
make sure you uh, you don't mess up like at any of the frames. And then he does his union burst again. We uh, we heal up. And now there's 30 seconds left on the timer. And all you really got to worry about is surviving. Like surviving is the most important thing. You don't have to try to do more damage to him. You just have to make sure none of your, none of your units die. So he should have one more of his um, his ultis before the timer ends. And right now I'm just prepping. I'm just making sure everyone's you know nice and full health and healthy. He already did his rocket fist, and I think he yeah he, he already did his silence as well. So right around now he should be able to use his union burst. Okay, I was I wasn't expecting the another rocket fist. I forgot about this one. So it's good that I healed up right away. And then I have another heal here. And now everyone is around full health now. So we're in a pretty pretty good spot. So what you want to do after the first run, after you survive the first run, is you can like right now you can see that um, you know his health is has gone down. It's permanently gone down. Um, he he follows you know rule four or mechanic number four that the enemy's TP and HP bar stays the same after each round. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually wait try to waste his union burst by putting in a single unit. So you just use one of your low level units. Um, you can get them to level 10 so they can actually fight in the dungeon. And you just, want, you just want to feed them into the boss, like over and over again. We're just gonna feed them into the boss over and over again until he does his, um, his ulti. We're, we're just gonna keep feeding him. And I think it takes around four, three or four or so for him to do it. So right now he just wasted his his ulti, so his TP bar is like close to he gets a bit of TP from from killing one of your units, but his TP bar is is very very close to zero right now. So it's like it probably regen like ten percent or something like that. Um, it's it's gonna be not a lot, which will buy you time for the next run in order for your units to you know to get full TP. You card to prep her shield and then have your units be able to, to heal everyone to full. So we just go in again, and this time um, I went in with Akari because my, my Kokoro didn't have a, a full bar, has barely any TP, and she wasn't able to survive the second round before the boss um, you know, used, his, like, used his union burst. So I had to put in another unit that I prepped before that has a full TP bar, which is why I had to switch them in and out. I have to have a second unit um, for my third slot to switch them back and forth. I don't have to do this anymore after I've um, passed level level 60. But if you want to do this in your 50s, um, I think you need to have an extra unit. It's just too difficult unless you're running like another a really strong like single target healer like um, Maho or or Shizuru or something like that. So we just kind of go in, um, you know, do the same thing. I won't show the entire run because it's actually very, very long. And it, it actually, I failed quite a few times. I tried it a few times with Kokoro before I switched to Akari. And I realized like it was actually impossible. So it th there was a lot of trial and error, a lot of uh, messing around. And I won't show the entire run here. But this is the basic strategy. So you just want to repeat this process over and over again until he dies. You just go in, you know, survive a round, and then, you know, do some damage to him. Put in a few units to make him waste his 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 ulti, and then after he wastes it, you put in your your team again. Repeat the process over and over and over and over and over and over for. A very very long time until you eventually you know beat him i think it's over here that he dies yes but yeah that's that's pretty much it i think this is probably the a new, possibly a new record 
it's pretty extreme to be able to beat him um, like with these units at level level 58 you know I didn't use any of the any of the um, like three star gotcha units in order to do this so yeah that's pretty much it I will upload a full um, gameplay of of the entire run because the run is very very long there was actually parts of it before that I was doing a lot of testing before and I actually um, explained my thought my thought process through the whole thing I was actually recording and talking through the whole thing as well so I'll upload that run after this video as as like a very long like one hour video and anyone that wants to attempt this um, can you know kind of use that as a as a reference anyways that's pretty much it thank you for watching i will see you in the next video peace